Here we are, it's 5 o'clock, and we're off the clock. Today I got with me my dad, Tim Scott, and a special guest, Brandon Trailer, better known as Cuz, from Cuz Outboards. And today we're going to talk about Cuz, right? He's everybody's favorite person in Arkansas. I don't know about that. Well, he just, he's the king about me now, you know? He kills those ducks. Yeah, I don't oh, know yeah. about that either. I would say a local <laughs> legend. Yeah. So uh, where, where did it all start, Cuz? How did, how did this whole thing come to where it is now? Well, um, basically, where it all started was we were just duck hunters, you know, going and having a good time. Pretty much nobody's just down there trying to kill a duck. Um, and, you know, there's a 4 a.m. rule at mile meter, so everybody used to just line up, take off, race the holes, and um, – I've always had that racing mentality, even from we used to run run a bunch of dirt bikes, four wheelers. We used to hop them up, make them yeah. faster. So I was like, man, I I told Derek, you know, one day I was like, I think I can make our boats faster, you know. So yeah. We started fooling with our boats. This turned into that. Um, we started beating everybody. So then some of our buddies were like, well, hey, will you work on our boats? You know, we we're like, yeah, that's cool. And it just kind of blossomed from there. Um, started doing it part time in the garage. What else were you doing? Like why you started doing the uh, boat motors? Back then, I did uh, security alarms, cameras. Oh, okay. Mag locks, access control. I did a lot of stuff like that. I mean, this was just like a hobby, you know. So you started doing it on the side in your uh, garage? In my garage uh, until it was completely full of motors and stuff like that, and then got a little shop. And Benton, I don't know, I think it was 15, 1,800 square foot. I remember that shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we completely filled it up with boats and motors. And then the next shop was like 10,000 square foot, completely filled it up. So by that time, you're like, okay, this is what we're doing. Yeah, by that time, it was full-blown Cuz Outboards. And uh, that's how it got started. So where where did – so so what year year did you and and Cuz meet, Dad? Man, um, it was probably um, 2012. 11 or 12. 11, yeah, something like that. And something that was like that. that was what what boat? Was it Edge? The Edge, yeah. Edge yeah. boats. Mm-hmm. That's when. Yeah, Cuz put the Edge on the map, no doubt. It's when you were developing the Edge. Mm-hmm. Um, so was Edge, would, would you say Edge was the beginning of the uh, the whole running era? The, the, the souped up, faster? Not really. It wasn't the beginning, but it it elevated it to the next level. To the next level. Yeah, yeah. Cuz definitely took the edge to the next level. I, I, mean, feel, I feel like I mean, uh, Cuz Outboards made Edge, and Edge made Cuz Outboards. Yeah, outboards. I mean it was it a really group did. effort for sure. It really did. I mean back then we was running a DT twenty five. Yeah. You know, and and the goal was what twenty six, twenty eight miles an hour. No, I mean no thirty eight, thirty eight. No, actually, um, the first forty mile an hour. Whole running boat was an edge, yeah, with a Suzuki, no doubt. It yeah. did, yeah. Who, it definitely, who, who did that? Who whose rig was that? Uh, I'm trying to remember whose rig it was. Wasn't wasn't Chris Wages? Yeah, no, but no. Chris had a mega, yeah, involved in the first. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. It was. Um, I think it might have been Michael Tollison. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Chris Wages was next in line. Was for he? Sure. Yeah. You know, he was a big part of the development of uh, the edge and. The whole running stuff, you know. Yeah, but, Chris was, you know, I was good friends with Chris, and he was like, mm-hmm. you know, you need to meet this guy who's building this new mm-hmm. boat, you know. And uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, when I met you about the boats, I realized I really kind of already had been around you. Didn't even know it. Didn't even really? know it. Yeah. Yeah, so base, you, no you and Colson, P. Scott, y'all were on the same football team together. We've been going to football practice, football games. <laughs> and so when yeah. Tim came to the shop and was like, hey, I'm Tim Scott, I was like, man, I know you from somewhere. You know? <laughs> next you know, next day, we're sitting next to each other in a set of bleachers. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it was crazy. It's a small world. Small, small world. world yeah. But, you know, Cuz took everything to the next level, you know, and um, helped develop the product and helped us get where we're at today, you know. Absolutely, for sure. And now it's a whole nother it's a whole new game kind of now. I mean, it's a big deal. Everybody's worried about speed and performance, and uh, I mean, you're constantly working on you know hunt motors for people. Yeah, 
And and I, I'd say even now that we're racing, you know, it's even gone to another level. Oh, for sure. I mean, did you ever think in a million years that we'd be where we are now no. with the motors? No. Absolutely not. Never thought. Absolutely not. Isn't it crazy? I mean, we're pushing the motors and the boats to to the next level. And, you know, it's uh, you know, Cuz is very particular about his motors. You know, mm -hmm. we're the same way as about the boats. You know, he's a he's a hard critic. Uh, you know, uh, you, t you 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 take some boats to Cuz, oh, man. and he beats you up. Oh yeah. You know, he will make you feel what. <laughs> oh, the the worst part about Cuz isn't what he says; it's what he doesn't say. Yeah, I know. It's the it's the long drawn out pauses of silence. Yeah, that eats eat you up. You know, you don't know if it's disappointment he's he's feeling, <laughs> or you don't know if it's uh, excitement. He just won't won't express himself. Yeah, you know? that's right. So it's definitely made me a better boat builder, and now you've getting experience a little bit of it. Oh yeah, Cuz is a tough one. Yeah, he's like, Dad, you want to go to Cuz? Like, hell no. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you ship the boats to Cuz, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's never fun rolling up to Cuz and having him do the walk around. No, hell you're, you're no. You're just like, you're like, come on, please tell me something. You're like, you're like, Beast Guy's like, how's it going up pending? <laughs> pending. <laughs> pending. He's, he's still thinking. <laughs> he's still walking. He's doing a walk around. <laughs> this is the third time around, you know? But uh, he's definitely made us a better boat builder. I would say. Yes. And, uh, you know, when he comes into issues in the flood of timber, he'll come up and say, hey, you know, we got a problem here, we got a problem there, and we make adjustments. But yeah, he's, de he's definitely made our company a better company. Right. For sure. The thing about making a better product, you know, is if you're using it every day, yeah, you know absolutely. the ins and outs mm -hmm. and the flaws, and this needs to be a little better, and this is good, but it needs to be, you know, a little better here, and we're having this problem, you know, so. Yeah, you know, There's nothing better right. than using your product every day. And we're, and, 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 and we're also a company, too, that makes mistakes. And, and we can make adjustments from there. You know, we're not perfect right off the bat. But, you know, you know we take feedback from customers and, and especially because it's customers, too. You know, mm -hmm. he sells a lot of boats, man. I mean, he was number one edge dealer in the state for years. You know, mm -hmm. he dominated it. Um, and now, uh, you know, pushing the, the havoc to the next level is is incredible. Yeah, I would say because you definitely put them to the test, and now you're running a uh, MSTC now. Right, right. And uh, you know, how are you liking that? Oh, I love my MSTC. Yep, it's uh, you know, it was a it was a definitely a learning curve going from an outboard to a mud motor, especially the bigger boat. You know, that's something I had to get past for a while because we always had you know 1550s and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And, um. I thought as soon as I got that mud boat, I was like, God, this is a 17 foot boat. <laughs> How am I going to get through the woods? But it's yeah. really not that bad once you get used to it. I, I'd say everybody, when they get their first mud boat, you're probably going to hate it the first week. And then you're going to start realizing what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of a tool than just a, mm -hmm. I mean, you can just get places with it. And whatever's in your way, you just run it over. Yeah, you just bulldoze it. It kind of gives you like a supernatural power. It does. It, your head no. going, uh, your head, like mm. as you're going through the timber, going through, you know, jumping beaver dams, whatever it is. I mean, you're just, it's it's just as fun to drive yeah. the MSTC. You in. know, and, and you know, with the havoc I beam ribs, and it gives the guy, you know, it's confidence, peace, peace to, of mind too. Yeah, yeah you, give, you know, you know, it gives a, you know the customer confidence to get through where he needs to go. Yeah, you don't have to you worry know. about it. No, you just get it done. You know, you run shit over, and and uh, havoc will take care of the rest. Yeah, you it know. Is. So it, it's a very, very good boat. I'm glad to see uh, Cuz Outboard's running the MSTC. It is. You know, and uh, he's ran the uh, Mod 40s and the RDBSTs too. So they've developed a lot of boats for us and helped us make them better. And this year uh, you'll have your hands on a Gen 2. Yeah, Gen 2's coming to test out. Test out in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, we're going to see what it'll do. I mean, I know y'all have Y'all have been running them quite a bit. Y'all took one in Illinois, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, old Sean Bounds up there. Yeah. Um, ran, you know, ran one up and down the river. It uh, did exceptionally well, I thought, um, especially being loaded down, you right. know, with a four-stroke. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, hauled all of Sean's hunting gear. He had a couple tree stands in there, uh, his backpack, all of his gear, and he, man, he come around the corner floating the nose. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. set up really nicely. I think he was surprised. I think uh, it did, you know, he, we, he called me after – you know, we left and was like, mm -hmm. dude, I can't get it out of my head. He's like, it did so well being loaded down. 
Yeah, the Gen 2 did really good in the creeks. We ran up and down the creeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had deer stands in it, loaded down. Um, it did good with two people in the boat. So that was the first time the Gen 2 was actually in an environment. Yeah, in the field. Yeah, it, it, it really did good, other than the boat rate, you know, races, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, it did really good, and we did start production on Gen 2s. Mm-hmm. So um, we had a couple of Gen 2s out there in South Carolina. And you know, you know, they're doing really good. So we're looking forward to seeing the Gen Two and Florida Timber. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think we were all kind of ah, we didn't really know what to expect whenever we were racing it because it's mm-hmm. man, it's hard to beat the Mod Forty. Well, you know, Cuz is like super, super tough on the Gen Two. Yeah, you know. he has been from the very beginning. Oh, absolutely. Well, the Mod Forty was so good. You know, my, yeah. in my mind, I was just like, I don't know if you're going to outrun that thing. No, shit, I don't still think we are going to outrun that thing. Here we go again. You know, it's it's just a, you know, <laughs> what was it, a one hundredth of a second It difference? was one one hundredth. Of a second difference? Of a second difference. 100 gauge versus 80 gauge? Yes. Yes. But let me tell you, still, mm. though, it is, you're right, though, it is hard to beat the Mon 40. It is hard to beat the Mon 40. Such a, just a all-round quick boat to be yeah. but all around duck hunting rig uh mm-hmm. shifting the weight forward in the uh the gen 2 the bass boat style corner brackets stronger transom 100 gauge hole 5086 alloy you know um we took the mod 40 we took uh the dbst we kind of kind of mixed it up a little bit and tried to build the the perfect boat um i, th- I think the gen 2 has a place i think it does too and it, it, it may not be on the track yeah, it may or may not. It's no slouch uh, on the track. No, no, it's no, not. No, 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 no. But it, but I don't I don't know if it is going to be as quick as a mod forty. Yeah, no, you know? we don't, we we don't know. Cuz might win this battle on the mod forty. You know, it's always been fun to argue with Cuz over the years. But you know, that's what makes us good. You know, uh, you know, we'll argue back and forth. But um, you know, it keeps us. Moving forward, it does because we we constantly keep trying to prove Cuz wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Just, like I come to work yeah. every day to prove him wrong. Like I just remember all the things that Cuz says, and I'm like, oh, Cuz, like, you're gonna eat your words, Cuz. I would really days. I wake up at three o'clock every morning just to prove him wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a critic, you know. You see these these real tough food critics that are, you know, that's all Cuz is in, yeah, the, in the boat world. He pisses me off. Well, I'm just yeah. pushing y'all to the next level. You oh, know, I know. Elevating us. It's definitely a good Y'all got effort. the talent to do it. You just got to have the yeah. kick yeah. in the ass. Yeah, I think you know, I wake up and the motivation. Off at, <laughs> piss off at the world because it disappointed us, you know. Oh, yeah. We got to push ourselves harder, you know. But, you know, it's been fun over the years, you know, developing this been. product. And, you know, because it's definitely, you know, a big part of it, you know, for sure. But uh, I see the, uh, the Gen 2 taking over. The, I do, too. The lineup. I mean, I predict that. I absolutely do, too. I can uh, see it. I've already seen it in the, the Marsh Runners. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm already seeing it in the Marsh Runners. Um, and the Arkansas folks ain't got the Gen 2 553s five, five, yet. Uh, but they're coming. And um, we got some new product coming out. The 14, what is it? So 1444. And uh, what, what's really cool about this boat is. And because, and because I don't know a lot about this, but he's going to get one here pretty soon. He is you know? going to get one. Yeah. And this is basically a pretty uh, opened up boat, which means it doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. You know, mm-hmm. the deck the deck doesn't have a hatch or anything. It's one of them drop uh, drop decks that right. just yeah. comes off. And just we don't want to say too much about it because it's still a surprise. Right. It is, you but know. you know, because you know, because we have to, you know, we have to test it, make sure everything's right. But so far, though, we're liking everything we're seeing. It from is. It. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a surprise to everybody, especially at the pi- you know the price point. Mm-hmm. This boat's going to come in, especially due to December and January. Yeah, so this is going to uh, be the time to buy the boat uh, once Cuz gets his hands on it. Yeah, I like a good open floor. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it definitely going to give you an option for a smaller uh, boat. Mm-hmm. I you think know. it's been needed. You know, I think a lot of guys want a smaller boat like that, and we just haven't yeah, built anything other than a five fifty mm-hmm. and a. Uh, before they get a 550 VJ, and yeah. that you know that's the closest they can get to that. And, right. and if and if I remember, this boat's ready for a 30. It does. It rates all the way up to a 30. Yeah, so it's gonna be a little rocket, dude. It's gonna be so sweet. And there's something you you make about the bottom that that we can't say, but it's gonna be a yeah. rocket. And the, really, out the whole rear end of the boat's unique. Yeah, it is. I mean, we don't. There is not a boat that we build that is anything like this. Yeah, it's actually a 1444. 1444. And, coming uh, soon. Yeah, coming soon. 
And we got the new center console utility model coming out. Yep. It's mm-hmm. 18, uh, it's built in the 1865. So yep. it's uh, not, you know, it's a shorter, thicker boat utility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's got a ton of floor space. Uh, aluminum center console. And it's for your, uh, just your utility guys. We'll put work in with the boat. Yeah. And it's going to be sweet too. So. But the main attraction this year is going to be the 553 or Mod 40. That Gen yeah. 2. Gen 2. It's going to be the timber edition. It's going to be the hard hitter, I feel like. I think so, too. It's already proven itself on the track. You know, mm-hmm. and I think I think uh, it's going to be good in the flow timber. Absolutely. And, I, and you know, those, you fishing guys that uh, want a uh, tiller handle boat built a little bit around fishing, this uh, Marsh Runner Gen 2 uh, Bass Assassin series is going to be the one for you guys. Yes, we are going to bring the Bass Assassin back. You know, it we is. get calls all the time about the Bass Assassin. Because you get calls about the Bass Assassin? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. And it was a really it was a really popular boat back in the day. Uh, we just couldn't get the rating just right for mm-hmm. the weight of the boat. And uh, with the technology of the uh, Mod 40, we learned through Pineville. Uh, we learned to redesign the hull. And I think we got an 1856. Uh, uh, it's it's tote in the mail. It is. It's good. And, uh, uh, the whole uh, front deck system, the way it all works, you know. It has a shell of rod boxes in it. <clears throat> um, built into the front deck, and you uh, the live well. You know, this boat comes with a live well really? built in. Yeah. What's it yeah. ready for? It's ready Se- for a 75. 75 Mercury, or 75. Y'all anything. Yeah, 70 yeah. 70 Yamaha, 75 Mercury. But it's the first tiller handle that's actually ready for a 75. Yeah, that was the issue with the uh, Bass Assassins in the past. Ready for Just, 60. Tiller handles are hard to get, you know, higher up ratings for. Right. But it runs pretty good. It does. You know, we tested it out when we took it to South Carolina. Mm-hmm. We put it through the through the tests, and we learned so much from there. You know, we took that boat, came back, redrew it, made some changes, and uh, got the rating we needed. So now we're ready to roll with them. Yeah. yeah. Super excited about it. Um, Super excited. What about these races? Guys, they start in February. Are we having a race really? in February? Is February, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I've heard is we're going to be racing in February. Oh, my God. Dude, so we it's said it's going to be like a winter race or something. It's going to be cold, 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 cold. Hey, you know one thing? Our boats are run good. They are going to run good. That's yeah. the best our motors are going to run. Yeah. All sure. year. Oh, we say that. We're not used to high well, we humidity. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Usually, oh, though, when we show up right off the bat, we're like three-tenths slower than we left. Yeah. Just that. So we're going to start racing in February, but what's the big role for Cuz Outboards this year? You know, Brandon. I think that uh, we're going to be doing a lot more together, Cuz and us, and uh, working on motors in our gear shop. Yeah. Our gear shop's fixing to get major items dropped in it, and uh, we'll say Cuz has a lot to do with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's going to come in, and he's going to produce some motors and get some customers some options. Something they can buy, uh, some that you race, and mm-hmm. some that Quentin races or whoever. You know, I mean, we have a lot of people racing uh, parts, and the one thing about the race team is everybody's sharing parts. That's right. You know, and everybody's learning, and we're pushing the product faster, and uh, we're getting faster, like really quick. Everybody's jumping up, but the problem is for the new guys that get into the racing is they either don't know have the know how. Or, you know, the experience. They don't know what to do. So right. what we're doing is going to help them guys be able to get into it without the know-how. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and that's probably why it's not as big as it could be. It's right. because you can't go nowhere and buy something off the shelf, slap it on, bolt it on your motor, and uh, be able to compete. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No, everything's been like custom one-off so far. Uh, and just the, the technology now that – the end user is going to be able to buy. It's going to be leaps and bounds ahead of everything that's out there right now. Yeah, those guys are going to be able to come to us and buy a set-up stock race motor that built by Cuz, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll be able to provide that to them and Absolutely. go out there and, and perform in Pineville. Absolutely. And it'll yeah. have different levels, you yeah. know. If you're, you know, your beginning level guys, you know, then you got that that middle range, mm-hmm. and then the advanced, even the yeah. advanced stuff that we're doing that we're we're actually currently racing. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll be able to sell all that stuff. Right. You know, I never thought we'd ever see the, the efficient class in the in the, in the low tens. Never. You know, one thirty. 
150. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never thought we'd be below 10.5. No, I think a lot of that's came from the mod 40s. You know, there's what, 10 mod 40s out there? At least. Yeah, there's, there's at least 10 racing, 10 to 15. Mm-hmm. And then you got Cuz, you got Cuz working along with these other motor builders, and they're all sharing ideas and they're, they're pushing the motors to the limit, they're pushing the boats to the limit. And it's helping us to develop product faster. It is. And that's the key. It is. You know, yeah. especially with them all being the same boats. That's right. You know, the motors are making leaps and bounds. I mean, they're, yeah. they're jumping out there. Especially yeah. when you put the Yamahas on them. Oh, yeah. Yamahas versus Mercury's. Mm-hmm. You know, you got a weight difference in the motors. Um, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's allowing us to make adjustments. It is. You know, and uh, sometimes we'll get down there and we'll argue, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. But, I won't argue with anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, Josh Westbrook. <laughs> oh, Josh Westbrook's terrible. <laughs> oh man. Make sure know it all, you know. But yeah. um but you know, cuz what do you think? How do you feel that uh, how do you feel the how the race what we're doing for the race is how how do you think it's pushing the market forward? I mean, how how do you think it's helping the consumer? Well, so just going down there and racing you know, once a month and us learning the things we learn. And like you said, we've got other people involved now and we're all shooting ideas off each other. Um, it helps all of us to develop a better product. Right. You know, it does. How's it helping cause outboards? Um, we get our name put out there more, you know, and, and, and it, it also, uh, gets my wheels spinning makes me think what's the next level what's the next level because you know how it is you you never expect to be at the level you've gotten to at this point so now you're like okay yeah. well, where's the next level yeah so definitely keeps my wheels spinning um yeah. constantly laying in bed thinking about stuff mm-hmm. uh how I can make this better how I can make that better what if this what if that you know and and the races gives us a chance to go out there and try all those ideas right absolutely yeah. and it, it also so, helps you help the customers because we've seen what happens when you test this. Right, right. When you when you combine these things, this is what you get. Right. Yeah, you it's know? not only that, though, because, I mean, I, I know for a fact because it's helped other dealers. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, with other customers. You know, mm-hmm. when they might, you know, they might buy a Mod 40 and they might buy a DBST. But the chances is that Cuz knows. The right yeah, not setup. Prop. Yeah weight, mm-hmm. ratio, because right. he's been around the boats. I mean, Cuz has been there since the early edge days. The beginning of it, yeah. Yes. So he really knows our style of boat, and he can really help a lot of different customers. So he is a super, super important to our operation for sure. Cause Absolutely. Because he, he knows us better than anybody mm-hmm. when it comes to performance boats, you know? Yeah. And it helps him serve his customers better too, wouldn't you say, Cuz? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like Absolutely. I said, without the race circuit, then – we probably wouldn't get that kind of time to spend on this kind of right. stuff, you know. Right. Yeah, because we'll go down there, what, two or three days early. and Yeah. I mean, we, we'll put up yeah, to five, six days in a row. It's just, pretty, when it's race week, it's race week. Oh, it's know? race week. Yeah, there's nothing else going on. Yeah. You know, with yeah. us. I mean, we were focused yeah. on race week. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and just all the stuff we have to overcome. I mean, you, you never know what you're walking into down there. <laughs> you know, you yeah. never know what's going to happen from day to day. And so just having that experience really helps. Yeah, I mean, I tell you, if me and B Scott went without you, we'd be lost. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Now, the, I tell you, the one time we did go without you, we had to get Sean Bounds to help us. And let me tell you something. We were, we were like little schoolgirls walking around, just like. I mean, like, are you sure you should be doing this? <laughs> like, <laughs> have you confirmed yeah. that with Cuz Albert? So, so, like, you know, you got to watch everybody when you're at the races. I'm like, hey. So he's like, he's you know, he's tinkering, and we're like trying to make sure that he's not like doing nothing he shouldn't be doing, but we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, so we're like, I'm over there calling Cuz on the background, like, hey, Cuz, hey, he's turning this screw right here. <laughs> Cuz, I don't yeah. know, I don't know what this is, but he keeps <laughs> looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could You're you confirm this? I remember that. Yeah. yeah could also, you confirm this? This is the right move here, please. <laughs> but we're, we 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 definitely need Cuz. Well, Cuz was trout Absolutely. fishing. Absolutely. Wasn't Cuz trout fishing? Yes. He was. I remember that like it was yesterday. Like who decides to take a family vacation? On a race day. On a race week. I think it was testing us. It had to be. Yeah. I, I think it sucked. I think it was already planned. 
Well, I mean, I think this is good. Oh, that was an extra race. That's what it was. I don't know. We what weren't planning on that's going right because that it was the DSRA race. Yeah, I I had the vacation planned, and then y'all threw an extra race. I didn't really think. Trout I was like, fishing. well, I can't go to that. We'll let I, you slide. I really didn't think trout fishing was that important. It, well, it was family vacation. Nah, maybe. So know. once a year, me and my buddies and all of our families, we go hang out somewhere yeah. because. You know, it's a long time between duck seasons. I get These it. These are people I duck hunt with every day. I get it. And then we bring our wives and our families, and we get together and get a big house on the river, and we just have a week. You this, know. this sounds really sweet, but I get it. <laughs> yeah. Race I will, week. I will say, though, when race week starts, it is as hectic as it gets from start to finish the whole time we're there. We typically show up. I mean, when you say, cuz, we're typically unprepared. For sure. I mean, Absolutely. But let me tell you something. Who's excited to see everybody? I'm ready to see everybody. I'm ready. I'm ready to see Quentin. I'm ready to see Sean. I'm ready to see Jazz. I'm ready to see Darren. Yeah. And all those Yamaha guys. I mean, I'm ready. Yeah, it's oh, a great yeah. time. It really is a good Taylor. time. Taylor. I mean, Taylor's fun. It's stressful, but it's a good time. It is a good time. I mean, they they be up there cooking and, and uh, oh, Skeeter. Oh, see Skeeter, Justin. Where's Je- you know? Yeah. All those guys are funny. Um, you know, I, matter of fact, I was, I was texting Quinn the other day. I said, man, I, I really miss you guys. I miss you, Quinn. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> but, you know, I kinda, I'm ready for race season. Yeah. So um, it is a really good time. It is I, a good time. I'm, I don't know. I, nothing's funnier, though, than Justin out there on the lights. <laughs> His first race. <laughs> well, he absolutely sucks at it. I mean, he went out there, and we were like, listen, Justin, you got to look here, here, here. He's like, <clears throat> I got it. I'll just get up there. He's talking. He's like, oh, I'll get red lights. I'm going to be so aggressive. He gets up there. It's a whole different world when you're on, when you're up there. He gets half tracked right out the gate. Right out the yeah. gate. He was like, "Why didn't you tell me?" I was like, "Dude, I didn't want to. I didn't want to confuse you. I wanted you. The only way to realize what's going to happen is you got to go out there and see it for it's yourself." So funny. I'm dude. like, "Holy cow, dude! You're making cuz <laughs> outboards look terrible." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's like, "I messed up. I, I mean, messed up." <laughs> He comes by a video. I'm like, cut, cut, cut. Take him out. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're watching the boat go by. We're like. We ain't gonna Where'd sell Where'd Justin go? <laughs> we ain't gonna sell shit. He's over there just now getting played off. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. And then I'm like, uh, I'm like what are you running? Aluminum prop? We go over there. He's got he got two whole shot plates mounted like on his rig. We're like, dude. Yeah. What is going on here? I I, I walked over there and seen all that. So I'm like, what are you? I can't be a part of this. <laughs> it's you funny know? looking back at it now. Like, yeah, it is funny. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a good sport. And, and, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's definitely fun. You know, it is. It might be embarrassing, but it, it's definitely fun. And then, yeah, especially Quentin, you get Sean Bounds fired up, running around. Everybody just, you know, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it just everybody has an excuse for everything. Mm-hmm. Typically, you yeah. Know? you know, everybody has an excuse for everything. It's not just I suck. No, more than likely, it's usually the barge. Long drawn out excuse. It's usually the barge. But what I've heard though, and what I've seen pictures of old uh, Quentin, he's lost some weight, dude. How, I wonder how much weight he's lost. I don't know, dude, but he's looking sexy. You think he's gonna be able to uh, get down to like fishing out all weight? I don't know, man, but he's looking good. I mean, I always thought he was good looking before, but uh, he's looking he's, good. Uh, he's definitely losing weight. He is losing some weight. I'm proud of him. I think he's gonna come see us all real soon. He should. He? he should. Yeah. I gotta get back on the treadmill. Are you gonna you know? take Quentin hunting? Well, he joined my duck camp. Oh he joined my your duck camp? God, I didn't know that. Yeah, he paid his dues. Really? Yeah. He, Dude, you know, that's funny. You no, know, Quentin didn't even go come deer hunting with us. He he came last year. Yeah, he came. Was that the year before? Mm. Well, I'll be honest with you. We really haven't hunted the least much say, this year. Y'all haven't been deer hunting here. No, we've been in Illinois. We've been in Texas. Texas. And, uh, hopefully, but, we get to go back. Do one the way once this year. Yeah, I think we're going to go back with Sean Bounds. You know, we had a good time with there. He's, Man, you know, a- check the videos out. The videos look good. Absolutely. Um, we didn't kill nothing. But, hey, check them out. Uh, we're still <laughs> working on that part. Um, you know, we had a good time. Sean Bounds is always a good time. He is, know? man. He gets riled up. He's I, serious. I hang out with Sean Bounds at the boat races. But you you experience Sean Bounds in the hunting atmosphere, that he's a trip. Yeah, he's he is one of a kind, Sean Bounds is. Oh, he's a trip, man. He's a go-getter. No, he, he, he is so fun to be around. You know, uh, we got that Airbnb, and, and it was haunted. It was you haunted. Know, we thought it was haunted. Oh, God. No, we don't think it was haunted. It was haunted. We knew. We know it was haunted. For sure. Our cameraman woke up the next morning and said, hey, this place is haunted. Yeah, I and mean, we all woke up. We all, the next morning, came together, and we 
We, I was like, oh, what'd you hear? Okay. And Daniel's the squared away character. Yeah, Daniel's I mean, not one to be coming no, up with stuff. He's not making up stories. <laughs> he's not. No, no, he's he's legit. Right out of the book, legit. And he made, you no, know, he said, I heard shit last night. I said, I think I heard too. I was so relieved though, whenever I walked in there and, and asked them if they heard anything and they said, they like looked at me like, yes. I was like, I was so relieved because yeah. I was like, thank the Lord. They're not just yeah. picking on me. Yeah. I thought I was going to be the only one that was hearing all that. What you talking about some Illinois bruisers, man? We see Golly, some wagons. They are. Yeah, stay tuned. You'll see those hunting videos. It's pretty cool. But uh, we had a good time out there. We did. And uh, hopefully we'll get some duck hunting footage here pretty soon with Cuz and, yeah. and and Brian Jessen. You know, Especially he, Quentin, dude. I hope he comes down and gets yeah. in the timber. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Jessen. I talked to Brian Jessen up there. He was scouting today. And, mm -hmm. you know, he found some ducks, too. Cool. So... Hopefully we'll get up there and hunt with Brian a little bit. And, That'd be uh, awesome. Maybe hunt with Cuz a little bit, kill some mallards. But uh, it was a good time. Mm -hmm. Always a good time in the woods with these guys. You know, hunting, you know, racing with these guys, then hunting with these guys is pretty cool. It is. And, you know, uh, you know it's a little bit different. You know, racing, you're pretty much set on kill yeah. from the time you get there to the time you leave. But when you get these guys, like, in a hunting atmosphere – yeah. You know, they're a little different, a little bit more chill. Right. Yeah. And uh, you get a different perspective of them. It's not near as uh, stressful. Yeah. Unless you go hunt with Cuz. <laughs> Cuz is stressful. Cuz, remember that time we were on the U season when I, when I was a kid? Uh, it was me, Colson, and uh, my Brady, my uh, buddy Brady. Brady. Yeah. How old, how old was B Sky? Who was what, seven or some shit? Nah, man, probably. I don't remember. 12? I saw the probably picture. Around 12. I saw the picture the other day. He was 12. I, I looked yeah. at the uh, date and I forgot what it was. That's how long we've that's, that's how long we been building both I think together. it was 10 years ago, exactly. Yeah, yeah we 10 it was, years. It was a great duck hunt. I mean, we, we did. Uh, Daniel, good. You, got that, uh, you, you got that picture? Of what? Of uh, uh, cousin, cousin B Scott when he was 12? No, I, we'll get that picture with that one up there. I, but, sent uh, it, I sent it to somebody the other day. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But, man, the, the thing I'll remember the most oh, about the duck hunt, and hear me uh -huh. out on this, is when we got lost in the timber. Do you remember? Yeah, we got lost in the timber. And, I, and, and I, I'll always remember this because we were laying up there by the front deck looking back at Cuz. You're talking about a different day that I'm talking about. Oh, it was well, the same weekend. It was probably the same weekend. The same weekend. And I, I always remember looking back at Cuz, and he had a cigarette in his mouth. Oh, and he man. was smoking his cigarette down. And as soon as that cigarette got done, he popped out another cigarette because he was lost. We weren't mm. lost. <laughs> no, we were lost. <laughs> we were lost, Cuz. No, I don't get lost. Mm, we were lost, <laughs> for we sure. We weren't lost. I just... Turned I went, around. I got turned around. For turned sure. around. Yeah. We were definitely lost. Did you find the picture, Cuz? Yeah, yeah that's that. it right there. Did you send it to Daniel? Yeah. It may have been another day of that weekend or whatever. It but was. There was, was one day we did get turned around, and I remember mm -hmm. I remember Dad being like, didn't we just come through here? We were hunting in the evening. Yeah. And we were coming out in the dark. And see, that's the weird spot. You don't get to hunt in the woods in Arkansas much in the evenings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not used to driving a boat out at night. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're used to seeing the trail on the way in. Yeah. In the dark. You're not used to seeing the trail on the way out in the dark. All I know Normally is... when you come out, it's daylight. Yeah. So it looks totally different. All, all I know is I smoked a whole pack of cigarettes coming uh, out. Dude, y'all were back there just pop, 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 putting them down. Dude, I was, I was like, nervous. As soon as I realized Cuz, as soon as I looked at Cuz and, and like like he was lost, I'm like, oh. Oh, oh. we almost lost the boat that day, remember? Yeah. To I a was, tree. Yeah, I was smoking. Remember the tree? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It dude, fell, laying yeah. on the deck. Yeah, yeah. Well, that huge tree, we had parked that boat back there, and we kept hearing something. Yeah. And we were just like, what is that noise? And this uh, full-grown oak tree is just slowly coming down, and the boat's parked right there. Oh, man. And, and all of a sudden, it starts moving pretty yeah. good amount, and you can just see it moving. And you know how it is trying to get through the woods and your waders quickly. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, God. there was I don't think anybody was in the whole area we were hunting. We would, somebody would have had to walk out of there. Yeah. Yeah, I became a, a professional chain smoker that day. Yeah, that was where? Yeah, I was scared. See, there it is right there. Here's a picture right here. See, look at B. Scott over there. He's, look how young Cuz looks. I know. It wasn't a look great. At, look at Brady. Oh, man. Colson. Yeah, man. Look at, I mean, look at those guys. They killed the shit out of the Mallards that day. We lads. I'm surprised Cuz still ain't looking up in the air. 
Man, he's yeah. all about it. Oh, we were on the X that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were there. We were exactly on the X. Yeah, I remember. In our face, man. Yeah, all those kiddos are young. Beast guy's young. Cuz don't have a, one gray hair in his beard. Look at that. See that? I mean, Cuz, you look sexy right there. Yeah. Man. You're definitely, you, you, you're definitely a mature buck right now. Yeah. You definitely got mature. You're getting that wisdom, that, uh, that gray wisdom going on. But look at all the green heads. Yeah, I know. We, we literally, those ducks started coming in, like, and it was kind of foggy, cloudy that morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I got three youths out there. And they're just shooting the shit out of these ducks. And I'm I, every time I run out there to pick them up, I'm like, this is going to be all hens. It's going to be all hens. They can't see what they're shooting. And it, it just every time it was a green head. I think yeah. they got one hen out of their whole life. Yeah, I think it day. was. I mean, I mean, I still talk to Brady. I mean, he's already graduated college and everything. And they still talk about this hunt. I'm you know? sure. I yeah. Mean, Dude, it was, it was a great hunt. It, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was one of them hunts you remember. For yeah, sure. It was one of my top ten hunts for sure. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, Cause you really do look good in that picture. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a while since yeah. we've been looking that yeah. young. It was ten years ago. Yeah, it was ten Ooh. years ago. That's how old we. Does are. it feel like ten years though? Man, Everything I don't think it's happened. I don't remember. I mean, I remember cause like always, you know. I, I don't remember. It's not been ten years. It don't feel like ten years, right? does it? It doesn't. Not really. No, granted, we were in school there, but it doesn't feel like ten years. Yeah, but it also don't feel like I've been out of school for four. That right. just tells you. That just you know, tells you how much the product's developed. It's way different now. You know, a lot of people don't understand how far the product has been developed. All the heartache, all the struggles, everything between what Cuz did, what we've done, and and you know, it really started with Cuz outboards. That's what mm-hmm. people don't understand. You know, you can go. You know, you can see havoc. <coughs> excuse me, havoc is like. Boats all over the place, but where did it really come from? And you know, people don't understand. It just came from one little spot in Central Arkansas. And it wasn't a uh, a one step process. No, it wasn't. No. It was no. the tiny little steps, the little improvements, the the little you know the steps forward. You know, in and out every day that got it to where it is now. Yeah, it's amazing. You pick your head up, it's been 10 years. You know, you, you get on the internet and you read all the internet and like, hey, what's boat better, edge. Havoc, blah, blah, and this goes on and goes on. Mm-hmm. But it all started from one. Yeah, it, it, it really started from one person, and that's that's Cuz Outboards. That's what's really amazing about it, how it all spread about, and the hard work uh, Cuz Outboards has done, um, you know, Derek and Brandon and um, all the hard work. I mean, you just can't explain it. Mm-hmm. You can't explain it. You know, it, it was meant to be. It's been a journey. And... Um, you know, it just I, I don't regret it one bit of it. You know, it's it's been amazing for all of us, and it's helped this company grow, and it's helped Cuz grow, and it's, it's definitely pushed the product to the next level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee there's been laws written. Oh yeah, around our product. You know that uh, we've definitely one hundred percent. You know the boat racing and all that stuff. You know and. Um, Every day we we achieve faster and faster speeds. <laughs> it's like what, you just wonder where the end is. It's like I, where's the limit? I, I tell you, the next new hot thing is going to be these mud motors. Yeah, these things are coming around. You see the mod forties down there in Louisiana. What is yes. up with that? With yeah. the mod forties uh, and mud motors on them? Oh, yes. Quentin, what's Quentin doing down there? Quentin's down there working with uh, Third Coast Performance on the turbo setup on. A mod forty right now, yeah, and they are doing some crazy stuff. Yeah, they're, they're like running forty plus miles an hour down there with the mod forty. Yes, so I mean, insane. Are we going to redesign the mod forty? <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know. I told Quinn I mean, the other day. I texted him. I said, "What have you done to us?" Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, we're going to redesign the mod forty. You're, you're pushing the mod forty to a whole new new level. This was a race boat in six sixty, not a mud boat. You know, now it's yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's insane, really. So but that, that's kind of how these things work out, though. Yeah, it's something it works out. Yeah. something like that comes up and it starts becoming a thing, yeah. and then we got to design around it and you know push we, it. We ran a mud motor on the Mod Forty several years ago, and we say no, no, yeah, no, it's not going to work. So how did Quentin make that work? I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, he made it work. You he know, did. and 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 it, that also tells you too. You know, even even if Havoc develops a product, it takes partnerships between dealerships yeah. to push the product even further That's and develop right. it even further. That's right. Know? And then then all of a sudden we're like, ooh, we need to develop this. Yeah. You know? So 
That's a good thing about Havoc. It does have a small dealer network. Yeah. And it has a skilled dealers. It yeah. does, yeah. Every dealer has their little niche, yes. you know, and 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 it just helps develop the whole product line. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like this dealer brings this to the table, this dealer brings this to the table, yep. this dealer brings this to the table. You got volume dealers, you got performance dealers. You got and together dealers. it just covers all the bases. Yes, it covers all the bases. And it makes everybody work together, and, and, and it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. And it definitely helps us better. Well, cuz, what do you think about uh, the four-stroke stuff? Uh, when when do you think we'll start seeing a bunch of, like, four-stroke mods, you know, things for the four-strokes to push them to the next level? Uh, it's coming sooner than you think. Think so? Oh, yeah. Like, you're thinking within five years? Uh, I think there's some stuff coming this next year. Oh, really? Yeah. You're talking about like, right here, right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming this next year. God, that's the last, I mean, that's the last frontier. Yeah. It, I mean, that's the future. You yeah, know, these two strokes. Eventually, we're not going to be able to get parts for them. It's already happening with some of the popular motors like the DT twenty five Suzuki. <clears throat> um, they're starting to discontinue parts. Mm-hmm. I think a manufacturer is required to make parts for twenty years. You know, for for motors they don't build anymore, and we're we're, we're reaching that with a lot of these two strokes. That's right. And uh, unfortunately, the DT twenty five is getting phased out more than likely. More than likely, but um. So the four strokes are the future, and there's some definitely some exciting stuff coming up with the four strokes, probably sooner than you realize. Sweet, yeah, that's yeah, what's we, needed. Yeah, we got some projects on the four strokes too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's definitely been some behind the scenes stuff going oh, on for absolutely. a while. Absolutely, you know, it's I enjoy confusing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Distractions. Yeah, like batter up. Wake yeah, up seriously. one morning with a harebrained idea, and next thing you know, you're, it, it's, it's happening. It keeps the competition on their toes, you know what I'm it saying? Does. You know, yeah, well, it does. It keeps it exciting, for one, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, you know, that's probably one of our biggest faults here is, like, we like to think outside the box too damn much. Like, you know. Yeah, well, I'll tell you right now, I mean, we've built probably – 15 different like, boat models that have like, never seen the light of day. Be on, be, you know what I'm saying? Yard. Yes. Let's be honest. I mean, because how many times have you heard some kind of stupid story from us? Like, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> yeah. hey, I think this will work. <laughs> oh, yeah. It never gets old. And the first thing Cuz says usually is, hmm. 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 Puzzling. And then you're like, does he like it? Does he not like it? Well, it depends on what cigarette he's on. Is he on his first or second <laughs> or third? <laughs> he gets on his third cigarette, you're like, oh, shit. You know, it's, it's a good thing, though. It's not glad. a good idea, you know? Yeah, it's a good thing, though. I'm glad you don't just like everything we, we, we try to push upon Because like, yeah, it might work. I think it might work. He'd be like, anyway, why are we doing this again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never know until like, you try it. He's like, why? Oh. And sometimes you just get the answer like, um, eh, that's stupid. It's, I just yeah. don't see the point. I don't see the point. That, that's usually what I just don't see the point. Yeah. All right. Well, because we've already built two of them. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's what go, I'm like, wow. Will you at least go look at it? That's what he says. He says, wow, really? Yeah. That's when you know you screwed up. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. And you're like, well, okay. I get on, I get on the phone and say, because oh, gave me the wow, really comment. <laughs> okay. X and A. I'll project. be in the passenger seat when he's talking. I'm like, good, bad. No. Yeah, and he's bad. like. I don't know yet. Man. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and Derek there too, you know, Derek's a big help. He, uh, when you say Derek handles a lot of the boat stuff now and you mostly just, uh, yeah, work on the motors? He does. Yeah. He works really hard on the boat stuff, uh, rigging. We always got, you know, Justin helping rig in. Mm-hmm. But Derek, Derek spends a lot of time on the phone with customers, you know, recommending what they need. <clears throat> Customer always knows what they need when they call. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then they tell you yeah, what yeah. they need, and you're like, I don't know. You know, and Derek's yeah. really good about putting them in a rig that will suffice their needs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Derek does pretty good. Yeah, he know? does. I like to argue with Derek a lot. Yeah. Der- Derek is a fun guy to argue with. Derek pisses me off. Anytime I see Derek and Tim sitting in the office together and it's just them two, I'm like, oh, God, I'm going somewhere else. I mean, yeah. you're talking about a power couple. <laughs> I mean, you know? Derek, Derek pisses me off. <laughs> I don't know why he pisses me off. He just, I don't know if it's his delivery I'm or like, if it's. I'm like, Derek, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I get it. I understand what you're saying. I know. I understand it, Derek. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I, or, I usually walk in and I'm like, y'all are saying the same thing. You're just arguing. Yeah, because he says it wrong. <laughs> they they, they do. Said, they argue all the time. Derek says it wrong. 
all the time. It pisses me off. Yeah. Then I go, I tell, tell on him. I said, cuz, I go get cuz, you know. Cuz go get Derek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had some bad ordeals with Derek, but we always get over it. Oh, yeah. It's a. Cuz runs in there. So, like, you know, he's like the. He's like the moderator. Yeah. He calms everybody down. So yeah. Okay, he's like, guys. listen. Like, we, we love each other. It turns out you're saying the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all both agree with each other. Why are y'all so mad? <laughs> you know? So, cuz, I mean, we always. We always heard that you can sing. I can't sing. Okay, oh, come Dude, on. Dude, weren't you like uh, on a scholarship to uh, wh- where'd you go to school at? I went to the U of A in Fayetteville. Okay, on a on a what scholarship? I didn't go. No, I didn't take my voice scholarship. Yeah, but you had one though. I had one to UCA. What was it for? Uh, acapella. It was just a voice scholarship. No, it was dude. Cuz can sing. Cuz can sing. If you ever I get the, uh, I used to could sing. He can sing. He'll get down every once in a while. We're at the races, or he, you know, he drinks a couple of beers and he gets loose. He'll yeah. get down for like a split second. He won't give you the full, you know, pow. But he'll give, he'll a give little you just bit. a taste. He'll give you a little bit. He'll give you just enough to make you want to hear the rest of it. Hey, this year we ought to get a karaoke machine though. Yeah, go, cuz, cuz is one to sing for y'all us. Wanna, man. Y'all ought to see it. Dude, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, we gotta get cuz to that stage where he starts losing his Crocs. Yeah, Daniel, can we and get that? And let him get on the yeah. karaoke machine. Can we get that for cuz outboards? Yeah, hey, yeah. add a karaoke machine to the to the list. Cuz is a very talented individual. He is. Building fast motors and he can sing a little bit. Keeps his stuff in like has a good time. Pristine condition. Cuz is the quiet person. Mm-hmm. He's a quiet person. He's you know, me and Ashley talk about it all the time. What is he thinking? Yeah, what's Cuz thinking? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. No, Nobody he's, knows. You can't read his face. He has no face like when he's thinking. Like he never gives me a compliment. I'm like, Cuz, are you proud of me? No, <laughs> you know. Oh, it's funny. There's man. several days I go home just drink because of Cuz. Like he's not proud of me, <laughs> you know. So you're almost saying that you, your your main goal here is to in life is just to make Cuz proud of you. Cuz has always been somebody I focused on. Because if I can make him happy, I can make anybody happy. That there is true. Go. He's a tough one. I please. swear, I, I promise you. I mean, me and my, you know, me and my wife Ashley, you know, your mama. We've talked about it many of years, you know, many years. He's like, look, babe, if you can make Cuz happy, you can make anybody happy. I said, you know what? You're right. We'll keep on. Keep on. It's we'll keep on right. keeping on. He's been, a, he's been a really important part of my life. It's a good way to look at it. Oh, well, I, pro- I promise you. I promise you. You think we're just being funny right here, but it's the truth. Yeah. I, it's on. It really happened. Cuz uh, is definitely a big part of the journey. Oh, absolutely. And, uh. You know, it's gone both ways, and uh, it's been a really good relationship. Yeah, it you has, know, man. Uh, just a, just the memories and the ups and downs we've had. You know, it's been a it's been a hell of a ride yeah, for it sure, has, and man. it's not even over yet. And I think it's just getting started. We probably. got many many years coming, cause and uh, we want we want to tell you thank you for everything you've done for us. And, Absolutely, and uh, we'll just keep pushing forward and and keep growing this thing together. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. I thank y'all too. And uh, yeah, and thanks for coming to the podcast today and talking about it, opening up, and letting us know what's coming up in the future. What do you think about our podcast, Ram? You like it? Oh, it's awesome, dude. What do you think about the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, that's great, dude. She's sweet. Yeah, she is awesome. That's that's my favorite piece is the is the Statue of Liberty. It is. Yeah, it is. This table's awesome too. Yeah, it I like is. the table. The table's cool, and, and Daniel and David did a good job. Yeah, they the did a really good job looking all this mm-hmm. up. Does anything stick out to you Ooh. that you would change? No, I don't know much about podcast rooms. Well, so. I'm just saying anything you, anything you can I, pick on. I gotta say, I, I mean, I like the Trump flag. I like Trump flag. I like Trump flag. Yeah, yeah Trump America. Flag. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, thanks, cuz, for being here, Dad. Thanks no for making problem. time. Uh, yeah, man. Anytime uh, I could be on uh, on your podcast, son. <laughs> yeah, we might let you on a couple more. Come in here, off the clock with Beats guy right here. Absolutely, man. You know, we'll, catch us. Catch us here anytime, and uh, we got more podcasts in the future, yeah. and uh, it's always a blast to go into the new chapter of uh, what we do here at Havoc Boats, and and see you guys later. Check out our videos, race series, get more of a uh, cuz, but check him out. <laughs>